Hey, hi, welcome to Tea Talks. Hello. My name's Herb III. And what's your name? Matt. <laughs> Today we're gonna drink some tea. Matt brought over uh, some ripe tea from Yunnan Sourcing. This ripe tea is called Peerless. And um, it's a more premium blend. So if there's cheap cakes, and then like a regular price cake, this would be in the above that price cake. Not the super high, mm -hmm. but yeah, around the 100 bucks or something like that. I think so, I think in Canadian dollars with delivery, which is a little over 100 bucks. I ordered some other stuff with it too. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty expensive for um, a ripe tea, but that's because normally ripe teas use a little bit cheaper material. The stuff, the inputs in this was uh, two Minku villages mm -hmm. and wild arbor teas. So teas growing somewhere in the wild yeah. makes them more original. Um, maybe um, has more nutrients and chi energy, and um, might make this taste really great. You yep. say you've liked it. I've never tried it, so this will be my. I really. First I think you're gonna time. like it. I think you're gonna like it. Yeah, you know, and uh, get that wild arbor stuff. <clears throat> There's nothing beats a forest floor, right? Mm. To, um, you know, we try to mimic that. I do landscaping, and that's basically what you do in landscaping garden bends. Yeah. The most uh, effective way to grow a plant is to mimic a forest floor because it's just a self sustained biome. There you go. So these trees are from that. Yeah, we don't know how old they are. Didn't specify, but. Mm -mm. They're definitely wild. <clears throat> and normally they, um, I think it might have said spring pickings too, most likely. Normally I think uh, lesser quality spring pick tea or summer tea ends up being right. Because if they pick the tea again in the summer, they can ferment it and whatever. They can make their ripe cakes mm -hmm. so they don't have to be premium. And I guess if you pick the tea in the summer, then the autumn harvest will be proper and good. If you don't pick the tea, then you get flowers in the autumn harvest or something. Oh, okay. I think that's what I heard. I could be wrong. Mm. It's okay. I'm just here to drink tea and review. Yeah. This is a bit of a review. I'm excited. Second session of the day for me. I had some uh, Bata Mountain Raw this mm. morning. Um, but excited to delve into the right. Shishi. Cheers. It's right off the bat, it um, tastes like right, that's mm -hmm. for sure. The thing I get from this uh, is kind of the soft and velvetiness um, mm -hmm. as compared to Definitely. some other uh, ripes can just hit you with that wood, mm -hmm. earthy flavor. Like this is kind of a nice smooth thing on the tongue. Mm. Um, it's definitely silky. I'm just going to let that cool down. I'm going to pour another one right quick. Do it a smidge longer. Yeah. And see what we pull out of it. That's cool. And you're brewing this just kind of how I brew it too. I like to pack my pot. Oh yeah. Just like that. Um, and no, it's, uh, yeah, I like this mm. hard hitting stuff. Mm. Big earthy wood aftertaste in the mm -hmm. back of your mouth or mouth feel. Creamy. Mm -hmm. Salty. Yes. Um, woody, little chocolatey, and it does have a bit of a herbal taste too, like a, like a basil or something, like in the back, maybe yeah. a smidge. That could have something to do with it being menku teas or wild teas. Right. The reason I got this is because I have the t-shirt. <clears throat> I bought the t-shirt before Yeah. I bought the tea, and you know, I don't want to be a tea poser. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, gallivanting around town. Be like, you know, I'm getting like a little seven up taste too. Some interesting seven up, yeah, like a green bottle seven up. Like, there's something like the green bottle imprints in your mouth, kind of. And okay, taste of that, like kind of like a tartness, maybe. No, more Lemony. like a no, more like I'm a bottle taste or styrofoam taste or like a factory taste. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, it's interesting. So, this was also, um. I accidentally stored my mom's Christmas present hmm. in the tea. She actually, I don't know if I told the story, she came over um, and I had her Christmas present just like out on my coffee table and she sat down there 
Luckily, there's a bunch of crap on what there. What was so it? She, it was um, it was this collection of Indian spices. Mm. So basically, it was like that, and like how to this thing I got at this craft fair, how to how to make the Indian dishes, but it came with all the spices. So I like cool. slyly like grabbed it and I just threw it in my tea drawer. And uh, what so happened? Well, what happened was like, I, I learned how absorbent tea is for smells. Yeah. And basically all my teas smelled like um, cumin and um, what's that other powder? Turmeric. Turmeric, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't taste like either of those. There might be a basil. But you could smell it. Mm -hmm. On the tea, the actual tea. Yeah, so. I could, I could. Um, very faint. If you went, sadly, sometimes Chinese herb shops sell raw puer and ripe puer in their shops. Mm -hmm. And that's cool, make as much money as you want, sure. But Chinese herb shops, the ones I've been in, are very fragrant with all the mushrooms and all the ginsengs and all the other things. So when you get one of these cakes, they just... They reek, for lack of better terms, of every other odor but the tea. Yeah. And then it actually does imprint in the tea that I've had from them. Like, you can fully taste the herb shop. But yours is only like a, a flash scenting. So it, I don't it think was, it penetrated. It was for like a day or two. Mm -hmm. And then I realized. Um, but yeah, you know, I've even heard, you know, things that you should wash your hands with unscented soap as you're breaking apart a tea cake. Oh yeah, definitely. Because uh, have you that'll checked, absorb Have you tea. checked out the soaps in my house? I have not. Are they all unscented? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I go as far as I don't even have scented laundry detergent, but oh, that's because wow. I store my tea in my room. Okay. Right? So I keep, I keep it pretty scentless, but I serve a lot of tea to people and I don't get anything like that tastes funky. I get like, wow, yeah. good steep, or that was a good tea, right? Mm -hmm. I know. I uh, So I picked up a little bit of tea and it was a long time coming. And I got a tong of cakes and one extra and that's cool. So that's kind of what you do with the raw puer is you get a tong and a cake and then you sip on the cake until you feel it's ready or aged enough and then you crack the tong. That's what you're supposed to do. Mm. Um, but I have a little chunk of the same tea from years ago because that's how I decided to buy that tea is because I liked it. Mm -hmm. And it's been in my room for three years and totally noticeable color difference and they taste night and day different. No way. Because I, have, I always have temperature on in my bedroom for the tarantulas and for the tea so it's always 21 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then I have this big pot of water that brings it from like maybe 25 humidity to 44 humidity. So it's half of what a wet place would be like, but it's a little bit wetter than our normal. Right. And it is fermenting the tea properly. That's crazy. So, so you just leave a big pot of water out yeah. in your room and it adds all that humidity. A little bit. And mm. uh, so the tea I bought is coming from Kunming. So it's coming from Yunnan sourcing where we got this. And I mm. assume there's a lot of tea in there, like a lot, a lot, a lot of tea. So. I can understand that a business owner is not going to want to put an element of water or heat yeah. around that much product. And the thing is, if you leave it completely dry, you could have a cake that's 20 years old that tastes really similar to when it was five years old. And people yeah. actually look for that because it's like it's aging and developing, but so slow that it tastes original. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. I want a little bit because I, I like the age taste. I like when it gets deeper and sweeter, but my my overhead is less of a tragedy if it gets ruined. So. Yeah, and it's not; it's going really good. I'm gonna. What I'll do is I'll brew both teasers, maybe on here, and we'll try them together, and you'll be like, probably like, wow. I'd like that. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see the difference. Oh. Yeah, it'll trip you out actually. Yeah, I so this. This is the closest thing mm. I've had to like cocoa powder mm. and uh, dark chocolate. Yeah. Like that really, it sticks in, when, when you have like a high percentage cocoa dark chocolate yeah. and it sticks in the back of your mouth, this is what this yeah. reminds me of. It's great. I love it. So this is a good tea. Mm. So you're a ripe guy. So what I would do, if I were you, for the future, if you wanted to stock up on tea, is I'd find teas like this that are above the bar, 
and I'd buy like seven of them and then I would hide them and never open them again. Drink them in 30 years and you'd have right. super premium tea. Yeah, well, I mean, get a Pumador because, I mean, I, yeah. I, my apartment is so wacky. It gets, it gets very cold and humid mm -hmm. in the winter and then it gets super hot and dry in the summer. Mm -hmm. And I have an air conditioner now, splurged mm -hmm. on that finally, but I just don't want to, I mean, I'm, I'm just buying cakes now to drink and try totally. out, you know, so. Yeah, I say do that for, you can, you can do that for the rest of your life, don't have good teas, except the only disadvantage is you won't be able to know what your teas taste like when they're old unless you keep buying them. Yeah. But if they sell out, it's done. Two, if you're buying something for a hundred bucks, 2020 pressing, good deal, mm -hmm. right? If you wanted to taste it 15 years down the road when it has all these funky extra things, that hundred dollar cake's going to be $700. Yeah. Right? Or whatever. Yeah. If, if it's a good enough picking. Five, well, yeah. 300, I, I mean, you know, and that's that's something I get a Pumador for. I yeah. I'd want to invest in that. I have a I got a room in my apartment. That so I do that. there is if if you were careful about it, there is ways people have figured out how to turn like totes, like food safe, non plastic leech and stinky totes. They've turned them into Pumadors where they add. Um, there's like these little globular jelly balls that you can add water on and they um uh -huh. they keep oh they're for cigars i think oh. so they're they're uh they're the opposite of a desiccant okay. they're a wet wet desiccant oh, i don't know a desiccant is a uh... those like drying out packets oh, okay they're kind oh, of the same yeah, thing. Yeah. but it, so it's these little jelly balls they put this little thing in there and then they have a humidity gauge and i don't know if they heat up the box but you could just get an oil heater and set it at room temperature Mm. Or a little hotter, so you can have this warm closet or whatever, yeah. and that would do it for you. So it's really just a tote, a thermometer, a, a tote tea light, light, like and a plastic tote. Like, like, are you talking about like a, a cooler? No, I'm talking like you know, like the Walmart boxes. They're like this, this by this. And they just got a lid. They're plastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you okay, want a food yeah. safe one that doesn't stink. Right. Then yeah. you pack it full of tea. You put one of those things in there. You have it around a warm area. The mm. warmer, the better if you want to age it fast, kind of. Yeah. Right? If you could have it at like 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Get and then one of those things in there. Bio things. Yeah. Know, it, right would, it, would, yeah. Uh, it would definitely um, it would definitely do what we're talking about. No, that's cool. I haven't really got into that. I, I still I feel like, you know. But there is dangers, though. What? If you add, what happens when you add heat, humidity, and dark? Mold. Would you want thousands of like if so? If you're not oh. watching it or careful about it, or getting a well, how would you know it's molding if you didn't like if you had a tong and you open it up twenty years later? You know you're like old man Jenkins and you're like, yeah. my savings is right here and it's just crusty. Yeah, mold, I know. You, you, you know. might you might want to uh, take them out of the tongs, I guess. Yeah. I have seen things on the the wide world of the internet where people have caught mold from their pumadors. And from just being in like Malaysia or whatever, mm. and I guess if there is a light white mold on the top, yeah, you can st it's still fine. You can rinse it off, Easy right? To scrape it. Yeah. But you know that's well. So Scott Scott says, and I kind of agree. If if you don't want to spend the risk and uh, the headache, you can just keep it dry in a, just a closet where no scents get in. Mm. And you're kind of it's kind of safe. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So this tea's good. It's getting me warm. It would be nice to like have a ripe, for, oh, like I was saying, like a ripe from each region, from mm. wild tea or gushu tea, like a premium from each region it would be kind of fun to like taste the, the depth differences. What do you know of Menku? I have a lot of raw from Menku area, um, yeah. Lin Song, right? It, uh, it's more affordable than Si Shibana, and Si Shibana would be like Manghai. Yeah. And Yiwu, those are like the first ones that really people paid attention to. Mm. Southern. And then above, or I think above, is Lin Song. And it's more affordable. Um, <clears throat> there is famous mountain there, like Bingdao, and places like that that fetch a really pre pretty penny. But um, I truly like the tea. I have three cakes from Bada Mountain. Some raws, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't been drinking raws a lot lately. And I've been—I uh, made one the other day. I packed a huge guy wand full, 
and I drank about four or five steeps. And yeah, I was nauseous for like a good two or three hours right after. And I had like a headache and I was like, ah. And you were just saying, you know, that's powerful stuff. And yeah, powerful you, you drank, you got, you drank a little too much. Yeah. You know, you could go easy, go yeah, easy, go easy. Right? So, um, <clears throat> some people say eat before having tea. Um, Daniel from the Chinese tea shop, he definitely says that. One right? hour before? Or just before. Sometimes he says have a biscuit with it even. I like tasting it fully, so I, I will drink on an empty stomach, but I've been drinking raw every morning on an empty stomach for years, so I've kind of trained myself, but there's tricks. You can lower the temperature, you can lessen the leaves, you can shorter the steep time, and you can spread time in between drinking. Mm -hmm. And the thing with the bottom mountain cakes, is I'm familiar with them too, is they're they're under the theme of a factory style cake where it's a blending of strong tea and they press it and maybe when they first press it, it's not going to taste good. Mm. But the idea behind it is in 20 years, it's going to be powerful and sweet and it's mm. going to have all these things that are desirable, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> making maybe a, a handful of lesser quality things, putting them all together to make something greater. Yeah. Right. But they're tricky in the beginning. They can be they can be scary. And I'm not sure, but it's probably I don't know where Bottom Mountain is. So I guess I won't. I think it might be in Manghire, which is strong too, but it might not be. But right. they are definitely strong. Definitely well, strong. I mean, my strategy is I I will, and I know you're you know you're not technically supposed. To, I I will just eat my breakfast as I'm uh, yeah. as I'm eating, and if I want to do it by itself, I just pack maybe half. Yeah. You know, of what I put in a guy want. Or you could drink them lunchtime. So totally accurate. Lunchtime's good too. Uh, um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, it's just less and then for uh, shorter steeps too, you know. Okay. And Go then, easy. Find find the limit. So then there's yeah. the other, the other, the safer style when purchasing. So I like factory cakes, but they all kind of have a theme of being intense. Yeah. Rarely do you get a factory cake that is just not enough potency that I've at least picked from the reputable places I shop, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you dive into single varietals, so if you're just getting a mountain from Manku or Yiwu, it might not be as intense. Like, it, mm. it's going to be intense, but some of that stomach stuff might not be as prevalent because it's not blended okay. for the idea of being super strong. It's just picked and pressed to represent that area. Why would the blending have anything to do with the because, intensity of it? Because that's the idea. So mm -hmm. these big factories are big factories because they've been doing it a long time and the, the 80s, 90s, and before idea was raw puer isn't really drinkable right. unless it's aged. So what they would do is they'd pick all this stuff and they want it to be strong and then the aging would be the purpose. Right, so they so it would the stronger, have a kick in 20 years. The stronger the cake, gotcha. the, better, okay. the, the better the chance it will become famous when it's older. Gotcha. Uh -huh. When you go into single varietals, that's neither here nor there because you're just picking what you got and pressing it. Right. Right? And some areas won't have, like, that stomach feeling won't even exist. Mm. And then and other areas will have this stomach feeling, but it might not be a full over the top nauseousness. Right. But if you pick three that weren't over the top, mixed them together, maybe you've hit all the yeah. quadrants yeah, of nausea. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, totally. But it, yeah, that tea's not a bad tea. It's just um, very intense for sure. My buddy, uh, I gave my buddy a chunk of it, and he only puts like a little pinch in a mug. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He doesn't have any kung fu utensils, but he says it's baller. He drinks it at night mm. before bed, but only a little. This is a delicious tea. Mm -hmm. um, would I say you could just drink it with anyone? Maybe not, because it's like ripe, and ripe is kind of like um, an acquired taste ever so slightly, but anyone who likes ripe pu'er tea, this is a, a guaranteed hit. It's perfect. It's smooth. It's not scary. It's really nice. It, if you, it'll give you that those long-lasting chocolate tones. Totally. Um, which I really enjoy. Just, you know, something to remember it by. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's powerful. I'm cheated up.
Oh yeah? Yeah. Hmm. So, we were playing No Man's Sky together. The No Man's Sky. And Beautiful we game. stopped. Yeah, and we stopped. Beautiful yeah. game. This game can actually go on forever. Did we talk on the last one? But there's eight quintillion. Is that planets. quintillion? Quintillion. How much is a quintillion? <coughs> if a million's one. Million, billion, billion two, trillion. Trillions three, eight, eight's the quintillion one. So oh, eight. so eight times eight. That many wow. planets or solar systems or whatever. But the thing is, each solar system is a Saturn, some moons, and a couple planets. Yeah. Every planet has a different skin and a different um, texture, which is cool. Different weather, which is cool. Different animals, which is cool. But it's peppered between three animals, a couple robots. Yeah. It's either winter, toxic, or lightning bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found it boring in a sense, and then I also found it kind of fun in a sense where it's like, ooh, look at this, but like, I wouldn't be able to do that forever because there's not enough video game pull for me. There's nothing to, like, there's no real risk in yeah. anything. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to, like, you can just sit in a hole the whole time. You won't die, yeah. um, I guess, you know, and then you just go back to your ship. Mm -hmm. And you spend the whole, you spend the whole game on your starship, mm -hmm. not really doing anything, but... The thing actually me and Wool really hated were the Sentinels. Yeah. They're really annoying. And and the game is glitched out too where, I mean, I couldn't get rid of them when I'm in my ship. Like, they just would follow me forever. I don't matter how many of them I blew up. I blew up like 50 of them one time and I just like let them kill me because... You couldn't go to another know. planet? They'd be gone? No, no. I couldn't get away from them. Oh, weird. I couldn't warp weird. and then... Weird. Yeah. I, don't, I have to end up landing and then digging a hole and then waiting. So, that's the solution to everything in that game. Dig, Dig a, a hole, hole and wait. And wait in the hole. Yeah, um, and you gotta hunt for all your little ingredients, just like every other game, but it's really tedious in that it's game. Tedious. It's everything from your health, to your shield, to your gasoline, to your food, to your house, to your airplane, to your warp system, to your machines, to all your little... Everything takes like one thing, and yeah. sometimes you got to get that one thing and put it in another thing to make another thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's pretty intense. It's it's like non-stop. I don't know, item management. They so, added they added cool stuff like you can get a frigate or a freighter or something, mm -hmm. and then you can actually have a big ship where you can like add stuff to. And it sounds cool, but it's just like. Once you have everything, you're just like, what's what's kind of the point of this, right? And mm. you can get a little, like, rover, too. Mm. And that's just, like, kind of boring after a while. Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't really need it. All you need is your ship. So. And what would we score this game at? Initially, it's like, wow, cool. I would, like, do an 8 or a 9. Yeah. But then after, like, 3 or 4 hours, it's, like, a 4 or 5. Yeah. Because it's... It just doesn't keep your interest. So... How much do you think it's going to be played in the future? I don't know. I, I, I don't... I think, think. I think, I think a bit, like, it's a bit of like a clone of everything else to a point where it's like it doesn't even have anything special yet. But what I, what I do like is the fact that it goes on forever. So you have a map system. They, they've successfully made a game with a map system that goes on forever. And it's primitive because, like I said, yeah. there's only Saturns and whatever. You'll see the... Re Competitiveness, but that only takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more time, and you won't, your brain won't be able to see the repetitiveness of the never-ending map. That's a plus. Right. And well, the the big thing is like uh, that's the initial thing because it because it's so big, and like you're like it gives you really, and then you go to the galaxy map, you're like, this is the actual universe. Like you can get lost <laughs> very easily because it just goes on forever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> You go to any of these systems, these galaxies, and there's the same three aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all give you the same missions, and they all have artifacts on there. Like, it's... Yeah. So... So that, that, that's the, what I was talking about. That's a little bit of the problem. I, I, I can't wait till they make AI um, NPCs where there's going to be a randomized first set of questions or first conversation, and you choose a randomized list of answers. And by doing that... It literally paints a game for you. 
And so when you talk to a friend and you're like, hey, did you play this? They're like, no, no way, because it randomized your experience. Once you can do that, once your brain doesn't click over to know that it's like wallpaper, then, yeah. you, have, then you have these games that people won't have to stop playing because it will always be different. That is okay. essentially we're the, getting ma close. the Matrix. Yeah, we're getting close. You'd be playing The Matrix. We're getting close. Um, but <laughs> I think once that happens, there's going to be a lot of other problems. Um, like, 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 like a shortage of, of human adult diapers because people <laughs> ain't leaving their chair. <laughs> no, 100%. Yeah. First problem. Second problem, Dine and well, Dash. Well, I mean, you look at it like you look at it like apparently... Nobody's like, nobody our age is having kids anymore, too, you know? I At least in the Western world, right? And uh, I have a kid. You got a kid. You did Jamie your, has a kid. You did your part. Jamie yeah. has a kid. He has one. I'm still, uh, yeah. I still would like to one day. But there's still time to... <laughs> there is, but apparently there's like, nobody's having it because everything is expensive. Everything is like... I think there's know. a lot of... <sighs> I personally sometimes think there's a lot of fear propagating out there about things. Yeah. Here's the thing, I'm not promoting one way or another, but the boy was super affordable for over a year. Like clothes cost like right. five bucks, food costs 30 yeah. bucks a month. Like a normal sized dog costs more than taking care of Isaiah at first. Right. right? So you're talking about he's like a little baby. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He's cheap. He's cheap. People are like, yeah, get the yeah, sure. You got to get a stroller, and a, yeah, a few grand, but you could spend that in fixing up your car once. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. There's a lot of fear to it. The responsibility, the time management, the, yeah. the changing your life. If you could quantify that into a cost, that is expensive because you completely alter your existence, right? But, yeah. Yeah, you're responsible for a little human for 18 years. Yeah, no, he's amazing. Right, so it has been worth it for me. The boys, the boys, literally the coolest. I think so, yeah, ever. and I, I believe that too. I think kids are probably something unquantifiable. Unquantifiable. You know, and, and you can't. It's not like a. You can't do a cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. for having a child. It's just you're to, talking about a human being. You know? I used to like, tell Isaiah I bought him from the store. I bought him from the kids' store. Chose you the best one of the litter. That's hilarious. He, he'd like that. Like a pet store. I can yeah. I, I, I picked the best one. It was no, easy. That's funny. But you know, I, I spent a uh, arm and a leg for this guy, and he's he's paid me back with cuteness. He's good. It took a while because he has no hair, but he eventually paid me back. And then there's this guy. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh, oh sorry, buddy. Yeah. This is Kramer. We we showed Kramer. him off once before. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Very cute. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, it, it's, it was actually kind of amazing how we got Kramer because this is Bailey's dog, but he's like the perfect dog to go side by side with this dog. They're both oh, kind yeah. of quiet, cuddly, and like meek. Yeah. And it's like... But they have a blast together. They do. So they freaking party. They work, work with each other. Yeah. They do wrestling. Speaking of which... Speaking of wrestling, yeah. shout out to... Shout out to 365 Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Went all the way up to the great city of Duncan last night. Got there early, saw some amazing WWF style amateur, or no, pro wrestling. Yeah. It was great. I'll show a little Immediately, video. Immediately, I was slightly jealous. I yeah. think that would be very fun to see, right? It's like, that's like a perfect sporting spectacle, right? Oh, yeah. And it's like you don't have to follow the Ravens no. in football or anything. All you have to do is show up and watch them do backflips on each other's heads. That's true. And, and I mean, anybody who follows the Ravens, like, has some serious problems. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. We'll pray for him. I'm praying for him. I'm praying mm -hmm. for him. Um. You want to fill up some more? Okay, yeah, take the a little, subtle, the subtle take a little pause. Pause for the cause. Um, and we're yeah. back! Hey, hey. Yeah, anyway, pro wrestling, amateur, well, WWF style wrestling. Mm -hmm. Would highly recommend it. I like, I mean, I, I personally love the yelling. 
and I got to do a lot of yelling. I oh, like raising my voice. You still excitement. have your voice. I know I if do. I I know if I went the way I yell, I like I lose my voice very easily. Yeah. So I'd be like, Hey, my name's her. It was really cool. They had like you know different characters. Um, I would flip out. Shout out Rad Dad. Shout out Rad Dad. Rad I, would, I would flip out in that environment. I think oh, that'd yeah. be so good. It's very uh, hot dogs, popcorn, and just chaos. It is, and uh, the uh, the wrestlers will interact with you. So if you go oh, like, yes. Boo, they'll go, shut up. Nice, <laughs> so, nice. It's cool. You it's, you feel like part of the show. So so the three sixty five are island based. I guess so. I think he said they were all over the world. But, wow. I mean, for 20 bucks for like three or four hours of entertainment. So, when I was walking home um, from karate or whatever uh, with the, my son, probably mm -hmm. um, a month ago, a month and a half ago, I could hear wrestling. And it, it happens a few blocks away. So, like... At the Polish Hall. Yeah, we'll be able to go yeah. there. We just got to find out when they're doing it again because that would be amazing. That's... I... I Definitely want to go with you next time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna bring like everybody I yeah. know. Oh yeah, yeah, I want to just like ha take over a section. I got just, I got one of those um yeah. those uh luchador luchador masks. Oh yeah, there was a dude like that. <laughs> oh excuse me. You. Yeah, there was a dude. He was flipping around and all that stuff. Wow. They did the flips and the flops and the, at the end it was great. It did the the mankind kind of. Uh, wrestling with the the barbed wire and the steel Ooh, chairs and yes. like going off, like smashing into things, bending things and uh, wild. Yeah, the that, kids behind us thought it was real because of the blood. They're yeah. like, they were convinced. They're like, this has to be real. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just don't go out enough to events. But that never, sounds really appealing to me. Like that sounds like what I want to see. Oh yeah, it's great. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's relaxed, having a great time. Mm -hmm. um, so, highly recommend it. Yeah, we should find out when it's happening again. I wanted to be a wrestler. Looking. You did? After that. Oh, after that. I yeah, I asked them. That. I was like, so did you leave that I, wanting to be a wrestler? I did, like, yeah. Yes. And I was thinking of characters I could be. Mm -hmm. I would, I'd want to do something like Scottish or Irish. Oh, yeah. And then have like, I'd grow my beard out. I have a big red beard, so I would like... Mm -hmm. Start have an accent or something. Yeah, that'd be, be like good. Rowdy Matty. That would be good. And like just I and I would like to be a heel or aka a villain. Uh, uh there too. Um, oh, yeah. What about you? What, who would you? there? There was a conspiracy theory guy with a tinfoil hat. Yeah, he'd be and my I'm like he would yeah, and he, he his thing was birds aren't real. Yeah. So yeah. he got everybody shouting that. But who do you think he'd be? I don't know. I'd have to be a little eclectic probably. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be T man? Uh, that's that's slow. I'm already T man. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like a Jekyll and Hyde personality come out like all like yeah. nerded out and just like stop it, right? And then eventually just and shadow kick. Get the nerd <laughs> rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's great yeah. actually. Yeah. That'd be fun. Be like very meek. Yeah. Yeah. And then very meek. Just get pushed over the edge. Get and pushed over the edge. Just biting necks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So I remember you put down tea for a little bit, or you weren't drinking as much. Now that it has been primary beverage for over a month, have you appreciated the slowing down culture of tea brewing and the tea experience? Has it given you? Um, is it a bonus or is it a con? It, it's it's more work, and I want to like you know. <laughs> I'm lazy. It's valid. So I want to like, some days if I'm just like too tired, I'll just, I will drink bags. Mm. Twinning. Pico. But Pico or Earl Grey? English breakfast. English breakfast, which I think but, is Pico. Maybe. But that's like, if I'm just like, I don't want to do it, I just, I'm way too tired. But no, I do. The, the thing also is, since I, I, I watch TV with it too, I don't really do the full effect. And, and I know I'm watching like a tea related thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of in that vein. But I think if I had just in silence, no phones, no screens, and I just did it, it would be different. So yeah. I don't think I can give you a clear yes or no on that. That makes sense. The, the, <clears throat> I mean, I have, I used to just drink coffee 
and like watch like inflammatory news things you know and that that was the worst i would not recommend just that stress just, just stress, like visual stress yeah like culture war stuff and it's just mm. garbage garbage when you want to wake up and especially if you haven't slept well it's not a great way to so but so i've definitely improved with the gong fu and watching a gong fu sure. related thing sure and how physically how have you felt great great i mean like you know Compared to coffee, tea just is a gradual. Whoop, coffee just goes. Ding, it's like okay. Yeah, I'm up and down. Now, right? so. Up and down, heartburn on the side. Bum, 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 I uh, you were talking about watching things, I, cultural things, and I uh, I recently watched um, a video. I don't know if it's Vice, but it's it's a video. Of this guy tours places, and he wanted to meet like the last cannibal tribe in the world or something. So he went to his place, from, it was a big struggle to even get there, and he almost screwed himself over multiple times. Then there's the fear of going into a cannibal tribe. And he ended up only meeting the sister tribe to the cannibal tribe. So, like, not the actual cannibals. And he was asking him, like, did you, when you were, like, 30 years ago, were you scared to get eaten? And, like, lots of them were like, yeah, we were scared of this cannibal um, possibility. Yeah. But... The cool thing about it, and I guess, uh, you know, um, first world culture has hit them ever so slightly, like a few of them have hoodies, mm. right? A little bit of like actual clothing is peppered through there, yeah. but he, he was just spending a day with them and like how they exist in the jungle. And it, it was really beautiful to watch. Like they kind of like cackle and howl to each other from a distance and like the whole forest is just human cackling and stuff. And it's like... It kind of like it, it's beautiful it's like that's yeah. how humans were supposed to be and i'm sure all cultures did that at one point we just kind of like migrated and cackled and our families was like yeah our biological ones and then the other 30 people in our group yeah. and uh it, it was it's sad that they're all disappearing but that was it was i i encourage anyone to look up that cannibal tribe video and you'll get the vibe I'm talking about. It's wild. And they also eat um, they eat the inside of this tree. Oh. And they cook it and roast it and it turns into like a bread. That's cool. Yeah, that's the primary a food. Bread. Yeah, like a, a well, well, it's not obviously not bread, but it's it like, like bread. And tastes like bread and, and sustains them like bread. Oh like that. Yeah. That's cool. Super trippy. Well, I mean I saw something now mm. they did a study um, about the most the happiest professions mm. and the least happy ones and the mm. least happy ones were lawyers and CEO business people mm. and that is a lot of you're sitting at a desk it's conflict oriented you know mm. a lot of stress um, and you know computer pretty staring, negative negative things can transpire. pressure long hours and they said the happiest people were farmers and I mean, if you think about it, that's that's probably farmers are probably the closest thing to that yeah. primitive, primitive human, you know. And if you had like one product, but then you also had like a functional farm beside it, then you're just eating organic and yeah. getting a bit of a workout and getting to see like the payout for your work every yes. year, right? You get yeah. one. With, I could see that being a, awesome. This, there's something like I, I got obsessed with that too. Uh, moving out to Central Saanich, and mm -hmm. I moved to a hobby farm, and mm -hmm. yeah, I got I got like kind of in, indoctrinated with that romantic, you know, growing your own food stuff because it is probably the most rewarding thing yeah. you can do. You know, you're sustaining yourself with your own efforts, and mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, the water's just about Should we, yeah. Should we do another pause? Yeah, maybe another pause and then we'll pour. All right, we'll brew a few more here and then we'll um, finish her off. Finish her we'll off. See how we get this nice and warm. So yeah, the well, I mean, just the chi after all this time now is probably it's relaxed. I feel good. I feel a little chatty. A little more definitely, chatty. Than definitely it was. a little chatty. Yeah. Not the coffee panic. Um, no. It's feeling good in my stomach. Feeling good in my chest. Mm hmm. It was getting me nice and warm, which I like that. I like warming teas. Yeah. Especially when it's a little cooler out, for sure. I went for a little hike mm -hmm. um, before I came here. 
I wish it's freezing in the forest right now. Well, it feels like it, it probably isn't if you live in an actual cold climate. <laughs> it's like around probably around four or five degrees. Uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but um, yeah, you know, you're going there and you're sweating, hiking through the forest, and this is just you know a great little thing to just kind of warm you back up after a shower. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I like I like a ripe after kind of some sustained exercise like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a workout tea? Probably raw. Raw? Yeah. Yeah. So this Probably is like a post. It's gonna be a posty. A post, post workout. workout. Yeah. I, I I primarily drink ripe with Bailey now because I I have my preferences. Sure. Ripe used to be way way higher on the thing for me, but I'm just so into raw, mm -hmm. so I just like save ripe for when I'm around the people who want it. What's your favorite thing about raw? Ah, the first three cups, that and the energy, yeah. right? It makes me feel good. And the first three cups have a lot of complexity. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if you're going to go take three shots of whiskey or something. The first three are probably the ones you remember. That's true, yeah. That is true. Mm. But yeah, would you ever buy this tea? Would you mm -hmm. buy some mm -hmm. Peerless? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, if I had money to do it. And mm -hmm. If I bought it, I'd probably want to buy enough and just... Good tea on the shelf. Yeah. Peace. Well, Nothing you, you recently made a purchase, but I don't know. Do you want to get into that right now? Or well, like secret? I said, I, no, I, like I said, I bought a tong Got a and tong. a cake and a couple other. Of? Um, the 2014 Impression. Ooh. So the Impression is from Scott United Sourcing, and he, made, he wanted to make blended teas that are affordable, that are kind of, not in competition, but... Um, the same as factory made cakes mm -hmm. but the difference between his is a factory made cake it might be miles and miles upon gardens that they collect their tea from when Scott will go to farmers and he'll go to wild places or small little plantations that are organic and do the same sort of style yeah. but with just higher quality inputs That's anyways right. um, that one has 24 different villages of tea in it from four years of him collecting and having spare tea left over and he made cakes so it's, oh, wow. each cake could taste different each pot could taste different each steep could taste different and you'll taste different regions because it has pretty much all the Yunnan in it you might as well just call it the Yunnan cake Yunnan so we will have that um, impression of Yunnan yeah. impression of Yunnan um, yeah, he's big on the organic stuff too, right? 100%. And yeah, like almost, I, I think everything is organic that um, he has, is certified. Everything, everything under his label, I think he's I know this is. Test. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I, and it's, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it's, and it's not more expensive no. than any other No, and he has to pay to, to test all his teas. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he, he'll try tea and I guess he pays and tests it, right? Um, and I think it works good in the Western society because sadly there is a lot of China phobia with um, chemicals and everyone says that this, this, that and the other thing about China. But everything I've investigated about where this tea comes from is the complete opposite for the most part. You yeah. know, every farmer has a choice to use pesticides and or not, but certain famous regions um, there's a lot of voices being like, hey, don't use pesticides. That's mm. not going to increase the um, desire of your product. So yeah. it's actually, um, yeah, it's not happening as much anymore. And um, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to just think it's all safe until proven different. That to is keep true. that phobia out of my mind or any other type of country um, discernment and segregation. I there, hate there is. I hate that stuff. There is that too. I remember I worked at a organic food store when mm -hmm. I was like 19, 20 mm -hmm. back in Toronto and uh, yeah the amount of like hearsay I would hear mm -hmm. about these peanuts are from China and they're they grow them in like nuclear waste or something like there's just yeah, stories cool. about everything and I'm like where did you hear and that? And I don't so, think that's true so let's let's paint no. another picture so Yunnan is literally like a really beautiful place. I've seen tons and tons oh, of videos so and pictures. Just like a forest and all these other the climates. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but no one ever talks about Alberta that has massive 
open puddles of toxic waste that they're yeah. not getting rid of. The biggest in the world, lakes of poison. Yeah. And that's that's our neighbors, right? So And that's in national parks. Yeah. yeah. So again, I'm not hating on any of these countries. I'm just saying yeah. that uh, there there might be voices out there paid to protect the uh, the image of certain countries, and there might be voices paid to um, damage the image of other countries. And I'm just going to turn the volume down on both of those. Right. Chill. And, uh, try yeah. To be, try to be respectful, right? There I'm not going to live forever. And if I get poisoned from yeah. a tea, or if I get poisoned from some crude oil cancers, yeah. right? Like, so be it. I'm not going to. I'm going to try not to worry about it till then. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we didn't feed the little you want doggies. To give him some tea? Should we give him a little bit? Should we give him a little bit? Should we give him a little bit? Two drops. Two drops. What about Crane? Is he? Uh... Oh yeah, he's in. He didn't. I mean, we tried earlier this morning. Me and Bailey. He, he wasn't into it. Try to give Kramer again. He, he's ducking it, but one more time. He might. He might. He has drinking tea before. Chamberlain, get at it. That's for. Oh, right on. He likes it. Good boy. Good yeah. boy. I got the whole slot. I'm going to tell you. Bailey to keep you. Yeah. Good yeah. boy. I'm going to give the rest of the crock run. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing tea over, Matt. Thank oh, you for well. listening to us. Uh, yeah. We will be back again with more teas and more reviews and more rants and more raves and more narcissism. Yeah. And uh, what am I again? Oh, no, no. Neurotic. What am I? Neurotic. Psychosis. Psychosis. Ah. Neurosis. Neurosis. Yeah.